All right, I want to show you three ways to link controls together. So the first way is we have our animation on the size over here, and then we go on another node. We need to link the size together. I just have this transform pin. And if we right click the size and go down to connect to the node that we want to go to and the control we want to link to, then it will link those and it'll be the same. There's a good side and downfall. If you have an animation dynamically linked like this, it's the most optimized, I believe. And if we go to the spline panel and open it up, let's select one of our nodes, it will be linked through here as well. So it's nice. The only thing I don't like about this method is if we don't have anything keyframed here, let's say let's take off this keyframe over here, then it is only linked at this first beginning part over here. And if we want to change the value at any other frame, then we will create a keyframe, which sometimes I don't really want. So in other ways, you have to use the next method I'm going to show you, which is expressions. So let's get rid of this over here. And since we have our transform already pinned, this little pin up there, we can go to our other node that we want to be on and let's go to our size. We can use expression. So we're going to double click the value that's in the box right there, hit the equal sign and then click off the inspector. And then I'll create an expression box that we could use this little plus sign, click and drag to the value that we want to connect it to. And yeah, we can use our size like that. And now it'll be dynamically linked from this control all the way to this control, which is nice. And whatever changes you make on this size, it will mirror it on the other, even if there is no animation on it. The only thing I don't like about this is that if we go to the spline page, it has this expression in the spline, which if you have a lot of link controls, can be a pain in the butt because you can't edit them and they just take up space. Also, the expressions are not very optimized when they are linked together or if they have other things in it. So I kind of try and stay away from them, but sometimes there's just times where you cannot do it, especially say you don't want this value to go down. So we want this value to go small and get super big. And we could go and hit one and divide this by the value. And we have something like that. And so that's a nice way to link controls as well. And the instance nodes. So I'm just going to delete this node that we have here. When I copy this node here, control C, then we're going to control shift V this node there. So it creates an instance, which is an exact copy and a linked copy of this original node that's there. And so we can link our input there and then view it in our first viewer. And so you can see it's linked again, but also whatever we change on either one of these nodes will be a link to the other one. And so that's really nice. If you need an exact copy somewhere else, it needs to be linked to the original. All right, one more method in order to link controls is actually using a frame render script. So if you go to the settings page of any node, you can see you have comments that we also have a frame render script. Here we could also link controls together using expressions. So say I want to link the size to the angle. I can just say I want the size to be equal to the angle and that'll work there. So now we have a size of zero because our angle there. But now if we started doing that, we can see we have something like this. And it's very nice to use this frame render script because it doesn't show up in the spline panel. And that's nice if you don't want to start cluttering that area. There's a limitation if you try and say link the controls over different nodes. It's kind of a weird syntax. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I just tried right now, but like uh, transform dot angle on this frame render script and it wouldn't actually get the angle of this transform. So it's a little finicky in that way. But usually for macros, if you have things that are connected to the node, then you are able to pull that information as well. But yeah, also a warning. I don't know if the frame render script also plays back a little worse. When I was scrubbing around with it, it seemed pretty fine, but I do not know for sure. But that's just something to think about as well. So my recommendations for connecting inputs and tools together would be if you want to connect a exact replica of the spline animation to another control, then I would use the connected controls using the publish method. If I want to connect a control, but I also need to do some math along with it, then I would use the expression. If I need an exact copy of a node, then I would use the instance nodes, and then the controls of that tool will be linked together. And then if I need to link controls without showing up with the spline, then I can use a frame render script. All right.